Do you plan to own a movie studio one day? Mm, great question. Yes, I do. Um, it's been a childhood dream and it's become more of a reality with so many independent people being able to do that and accomplish it. Um, so yes, that is, I have a big dream for the team I'm working with and building that team up to be big enough to need its own studio. So that's the goal, to build an infrastructure, um, uh, enough projects to funnel through to that studio be in use and then also offer that for independents like me that don't have that opportunity to give them that opportunity, just like another studio did for us in, in, in a lot of different projects we've worked on. So when you were a little girl, you were thinking about having a movie? Like, <laughs> how does that work? Most of the girls want to be little princesses or they're playing, right. you know. So yeah, I, um, I liked theater. Theater was like, wow. And it wasn't even, I can't say not real theater, but I started in church theater. But I just loved that an audience, I remember the moment I looked out and the audience was like captivated. And I was like, this is, I want that. I want that. And it wasn't the, I, it never, for some reason, it didn't really apply so much to acting, but I just wanted to create that for people where they could see something and they could feel something from it. And it wasn't even real, it's art. So I was attracted to that. So it started with a theater type mindset, but then it went to film because I watched so many movies. Um, my parents didn't let us watch a lot. <laughs> they were pretty strict. So auntie's house, whoever, they would let me watch movies and I was just like captivated by it. So I was like, I can do this too. Like. So it's very childlike uh, mindset on it, but then you find out other little pieces like, oh, people have movie studios because I would watch old movies. I, Singing in the Rain was my favorite movie growing up. So then I'm like, studios, look at this, a big set with like uh, uh, ladders and things. I was like, I want that. So now it's a real dream, a real goal, but before it was just a, a fantasy. I think I read where you said you were okay being behind the scenes, which, is just interesting just because you're beautiful. You would think that you'd want to be an actress or that people would have, you know, given you a lot of compliments and you're okay with being behind the scenes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I love, I love being behind the scenes. It's my favorite place to be. Um, it really, it comes down to um, knowing that leadership was a, was a strength of mine growing up. And not that an actor or someone in front of the scenes can't be a leader, but there's a limitation to your leadership. You're, you're leading through inspiration. You're not leading through, here's a job. Here's an opportunity. Let me help build your life up. Let me show you how great you are. It's a harder thing for someone that's in front of the camera, someone that is out there to look like something or to be a piece, um, a, use, a, a piece that someone uses. And that's in any industry, like a basketball player. I would want to be the owner, you know, because then I get to hire them and help them be better men or whatever it is. Like that, that was my thought process with that. I, behind the scenes, I saw my skill set could be an actor, but then I could use all of my skill sets behind the scenes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Also, too, you put yourself out there, there's going to be more hits coming your way. So it seems like sometimes it's more creatively freeing to be behind the scenes? I don't know, maybe I'm just... Oh yeah, uh, being behind the scenes is creatively freeing and then also you have a sense, a better sense of power. Um, for me, and I speak a lot of this to actors that I know, I'm like, I could never do what you do because they, their, their craft, they build it in such a beautiful way and then you have to wait for someone to tell them yes. That's hard. And I'm a very uh, East Coast <laughs> kind of girl. Like I go after things very aggressively. So for me to be dependent on just a yes or a no, which we always have to be dependent on that in some way in life, but it's like, at least I can like do a lot of things that can create content and things. That has nothing to do with someone else telling me, I like what you're doing. I do that first and then try to build it in a way that they would like it so we can sell it or show it or whatever. Um, but at least we have that power and loose, using that word loosely, um, but that power we, we can make decisions and move and then get someone to say yes, because they like what we made rather than the other way around. Have you thought about what this movie studio will look like? Like, will it be you in one state and then you can contract out to others? Like, how does this work? Yeah, I would love to have a studio um, on the East Coast. And uh, I, was, um, I was inspired by the West Coast studios. And then, then the East Coast studios, there was always something lacking or maybe wasn't everyone brought together in a certain way. So the studio that I foresee in, my, in our future would be um, a place where you can go and do any type of film, any. So we will have every type of lot, every type of stage. Sound stage is what need to be long, uh, very long and very high. But also on the side of like housing, 
for actors, um, crew, whatever. Um, I want to have a um, like an apartment style place that's right there. Instead of them having to go to a hotel, they can just stay right there. Houses built that we could use for filming as well. Um, and then if we were filming something more so on the soundstage, one of those houses could be used for say the director and his family. Because I, I think something that really discourages me about the business, and then and whenever you're discouraged, you have to then figure out how to be encouraged by it, by an action you can do. Don't, don't just stay in a discouraged place. Um, is that family structure is really difficult in the entertainment industry. We know this, but we can change that. It, just, it doesn't have to be an accepted fact. Like Angelina Jolie, like she was like, well, my kids are going to set. You have to hire me. You have to bring in an area where they could be all day. Got it. But imagine the power of someone that owns a studio to say, your family can come, you, your kids can see you after you're off set, you can bring your mom, you can bring whoever, and they're totally disconnected, it's not like the family will be on set, but then you can go back to a place where you can get centered for the evening. And I think actually performers and crew would actually perform better, and then the ultimate goal would be the family structure is held intact while still getting to pursue your dreams. You don't have to leave your family for a month, bring them with you, or at least let them come visit. I know you had said in another interview about, um, uh, the interviewer asked you about how do you stay balanced, which was such a great question. And I know women especially are, are told to focus on that because they are usually more, uh, you know, the, the primary sort of caregiver for the child. And you said just accept the fact there is no balance. Yeah, I how think it's, it's really important. Um, our goals, we're taught to they find that perfect balance and everything will become peaceful in your life. But what if you never find it? Then you're not peaceful. Like we can find peace in, in imbalance as long as we have priority. Priority is more important to me than balance because if I have my priority straight, I'm not gonna lose my sense of peace. If my son is okay, I have peace. If my husband's okay, I have peace. So within building an empire or going forth against your to get your dreams, keep in mind your priorities and you won't have that disconnected loss of peace while getting success. You can have them all if you focus on priority versus balance. For me, that's that's worked better. Yeah. So part of the studio would be to have a place where the family could be there if they wanted to. Absolutely. And then that balance sort of falls into line maybe a little more. Yeah, I think it's important um, that we don't just put the onus on the uh, the talent, the crew, to like, hey, figure it out. You're working for me for 12 hours today for the next 30 days, figure it out. I think we can actually provide some sense of we actually care too. And um, I've seen it with corporations. It's not a new idea. Um, corporations do it. They have family day, et cetera. It's like, we can't disconnect because we're entertainers and we're in this different kind of world. We're in a different kind of world, but we're still in the world. We still have families. We still have uh, a mom. <laughs> we still have whatever it is that life issues that we deal with. Um, so unions are set in place to help with some of that um, on the side of life issues, but it's a, it's a big gap with um, someone that depends on which provider right now in the industry to what they need for their life and not just their career. So I think there's, there's a way to do both while still being very profitable and not having a strain on the production.